Establishing the Bodhi Manda, Volume 6, Chapter 2. Sutra. Then suspend eight mirrors in the space around the platform so that they are exactly opposite the mirrors on the platform. This will allow the reflections in them to interpenetrate an infinitum. Commentary. Then suspend eight mirrors in the space around the platform so that they are exactly opposite the mirrors on the platform. How can they be hung in space, you wonder, just as one hangs a lamp from the ceiling? How could one hang them in space alone like the sun? That's not what's meant here. The meaning is to hang them so that they are suspended in the space in the room. The mirrors are placed facing one another. This will allow the reflections in them to interpenetrate and infinitum. That means that the image in one is caught in the other and within that the image of the interpenetration is shown and so on, layer within layer in never-ending succession. Sutra during the first seven days, vow sincerely to the first come ones of the ten directions, to the great bodhisattvas, and to the names of the arhats. Throughout the six periods of the day and night, continually recite the mantra as you circumambulate the platform. Practice the way with a sincere mind, reciting the mantra 108 times at a stretch. Commentary. During the first seven days, bow sincerely to the first commands of the ten directions, to the great bodhisattvas and to the names of the Ahats. Throughout the six periods of the day and night, continually recite the mantra as you circumambulate the platform. The mantra here is the entire Surakama mantra. Practice the way with a sincere mind. Reciting the mantra 108 times at a stretch. A sincere mind means that you don't think of anything else. You single-mindedly hold to the mantra. Each time you recite, go through the mantra 108 times without stopping. Sutra, during the second week, direct your intent by making a vow of a bodhisattva. The mind should never be cut off from them. In my Vinaya, I have already touched about vows. Commentary. During the second week of practice, direct your intent by making the vows of a Bodhisattva. You must be ever more sincere and concentrated. Make the four vast vows of a Bodhisattva. Living beings are about this, I vow to save them. Afflictions are endless, I vow to cut them off. Dhamma doors are limitless. I vow to study them completely. The Buddha way is unsurpassed. I vow to accomplish it. The mind should never be cut off from them. This means the mind never stops reciting the Surakama Mantra and it never ceases to bring forth the four vast vows. In my Vinaya, I have already taught about vows. When I spoke the precepts, I taught the practice of making vows. Sutra. During the third week, one holds the Buddha's mantra, Pua Da La, for 12 hours at a time, with a single intent, and on the seventh day, the first commands of the ten directions will appear simultaneously. Their light will be mutually reflected in the mirrors and will illumine the entire place, and they will wrap one on the crown of one's head. Commentary. During the third week, one holds the Buddha's mantra, Pua Da La, for 12 hours at a time with a single intent. One holds and recites the mantra, Si Dan Dua Pua Da La, spoken by the Buddha, that is the Suragama mantra. On the seventh day, the first commands of the ten directions will appear simultaneously. They will suddenly appear in the Bodhimanda all at the same time. Their light will be mutually reflected in the mirrors and will illumine the entire place, and they will rub one on the crown of one's head. You will have the crown of your head rubbed by the Buddhas of the Ten Directions, and this act will be reflected within the facing mirrors and in a bright image, which it repeats itself and illuminates infinitum. 
sutra if one cultivates this samadhi in the buddhimanda and even in the dharma ending age one can study and practice until one's body and mind are as pure and clear as a viduria commentary if one cultivates this samadhi in the bodhimanda with a platform as described above and if the first come one of the ten directions appear simultaneously and aid one by rubbing one on the crown of the head and if in this way one can practice samadhi cultivating the return of the hearing so hear the self nature and even in the dharma ending age one can study and practice until one's body and mind are as pure and clear as a vaidurya one's body and mind will become as transparent as crystal and will shine with light sutra any um, ananda if any one of the bishops precept transmitting masters or any one of the other bishops practicing with him is not pure the bodhimanda as described will not be successful commentary ananda if any one of the bishops precept transmitting masters or any one of the other bishops practicing with him is not pure then the bodhimanda as described will not be successful ananda we should know that if the bishop who is cultivating and upholding this method with the suragama mantra had even one precept transmitting master who was not pure or if he is cultivating this practice with another bishop who is not pure then the method will not be successful it won't work if any one of these people is impure that is if they don't hold the precepts purely perhaps they hold the precepts and yet violate them one is not supposed to kill but they have killed or one is not supposed to steal but they have stolen one is not supposed to commit acts of deviant sexual conduct and they have done so or one is not supposed to lie but they have lied the buddha taught us not to lie but they dispense with the not and just hold to the lie if that is how it is the body mind that will not be successful all the work of cultivating all the mantras you held will still not bring you success therefore if you practice this dharma and do not get a response from your cultivation you cannot say i cultivated for three weeks but shakyamuni buddha and the buddhas of the ten directions did not come and rub me on the crown of the head i didn't even see them probably shakyamuni buddha was also lying that is not the case perhaps you yourself are not pure all the teachers from whom you received the precepts were not pure or any one of the ten people you are practicing this dharma with may not be pure if there is even one impure person involved this state will not be accomplished this is extremely important sutra after three weeks one sits upright and still for a um, hundred days those with sharp faculties will not arise from their seats and will become shrota panas also their bodies and minds have not attained the ultimate fruition of sagehood they know for certain beyond the exaggeration that they will even truly accomplish buddhahood commentary after three weeks one sits upright and still for a hundred days one sits in meditation but not like some people who sit still for two hours and consider it a super feat they consider themselves to be outstanding people but actually if we compare that to what is described here it's like a kitten encountering a lion upright means that one does not lean to the left or right lean forward or back or get up or stretch out one's legs it's not sitting there and thinking ah my legs really hurt sitting still means that nothing troubles one sitting for a hundred days means one does not go eat or will even get up to relieve oneself one simply sits for 100 days those with sharp faculties will not arise from their seats and will become shrota panas people who are intelligent and have good goods can then sit for 100 days and be certified 
to the first stage of a hardship. But now you can't even sit still for one whole day, and yet there are some who think they have reached the fruition of a siege. That's really ridiculous. You have to be able to sit for a hundred days to accomplish first stage a hardship. Also, their bodies and minds have not attained the ultimate fruition of sagehood. They know for certain, beyond exaggeration, that they will eventually accomplish Buddhahood. They still have not attained genuine samadhi power in their cultivation, but they know for, uh, for the fact that they will certainly become Buddhas. It is definitely not a false notion. Sutra, you have asked how the Bodhimanda is established. This is the way it is done. Commentary, this is how you set it up. The Spiritual Mantra, Volume 6, Chapter 3. Sutra, Ananda bowed at the Buddha's feet and said, After I left the home life, I relied on the Buddha's affectionate regard because I sought the erudition. I still have not been satisfied to the unconditioned. Commentary After Ananda heard this description by Shakyamuni Buddha, he bowed at the Buddha's feet and said, After I left the home life, I relied on the Buddha's affectionate regard. I counted on the Buddha's fondness for me, for all his special affection. Because I sought erudition, I still have not been certified to the unconditioned. He was always concerned about being better than everyone else. I wanted to surpass others, and so he had the idea. You can't recite the sutra from memory, but I can. You can't even explain that sutra, and I remember every word of it. He was always competing to be number one. He decided to use the erudition to obtain the first position. True enough, Ananda became foremost in learning, but he still did not satisfy to the unconditioned. He still had not reached to the fruition of sagehood that was unconditioned. He couldn't obtain the level beyond learning. This was of great harm to him. Sutra When I encountered that Brahma Heaven mantra, I was captured by the demon spell, though my mind was aware I had no power to free myself. I had to rely on my Sri Bodhisattva to liberate me. Although I was blessed by the first common spiritual mantra of the Buddha Summit and uh, imperceptibly received its strength, I still have not heard it myself. Commentary When I encountered that Brahma Heaven mantra, I was captured by the devil's spell. Though my mind was aware I had no power to free myself, I became confused by the devil's spell of the externalist way, by the devil trick of a demonic drama. I was physically captured by the spell. My body was confused by it, but my mind was still somewhat clear. His mind was not totally alert, but he wasn't totally muddled either. He was in a daze, as if he were asleep, and yet he was awake. He was as if drunk, but he had been taking anything intoxicating, but the effect was much the same as with drink. When you ask a person who's recovered from a drunken binge what he did while under the influence, he will remember some things and forget others. That's the state Ananda was in. Or he was like a person who is about to drift off to sleep. He isn't quite asleep, and yet it has a dream, or what seems to be a dream. He had no power to free himself. It's like encountering a demonic ghost while you are asleep at night, such as a kumbanda ghost, which uses a demonic spell to paralyze you. When that happens, you may wake up and stare, but you cannot move. They were held by the demonic power of the ghost. That's what Ananda experienced. Although he was conscious, he was not in control of himself. He could not get free. I had to rely on Manjushri Bodhisattva to liberate me. The Buddha commanded Manjushri Bodhisattva 
to come and save me. I depended on the Buddha, so have Manjo Sri Bodhisattva rescue me. He freed me. Although I was blessed by the first common spiritual mantra of the Buddha summit and imperceptibly received its strength, I still have not heard it myself. The wound honored one, the first come one, the Buddha, used the spiritual mantra spoken by the transformation Buddha atop the Buddha summit. And when Manjo Sri Bodhisattva came to where I was and recited the mantra, I received the benefit invisibly. That means that when Manjo Sri Bodhisattva got there, he didn't chant the mantra in a loud voice. He merely had to recite it silently to free Ananda. It's all right to recite the mantra loudly when you are before the Buddhas in the temple, but when you are out, uh, out at other places, you can recite it silently, and it is just as effective. If you got out to on the streets and start blowing, Namo Satan to Su Chil to Ye, people are going to think you are crazy. You needn't be attached to some particular ritual and thereby cause people to slander the Dharma, which is what they would be doing if they said you were crazy. When they commit slander, they commit offenses. You don't want to say, he commits offenses, that's his problem. I recite even louder and let him slander even more so that he commits even greater offenses and he will surely fall into the house. If you have that kind of attitude and intentionally cause people to commit offenses so that they fall into the house, then you shouldn't even study the Buddha Dharma. People who study the Buddha Dharma are sympathetic and compassionate toward others. Their attitude is to do nothing that would cause anyone else to fall into their house, even to the point that they would rather go to their house themselves than cause anyone else to go. That's the way you should be. You cannot think, he slandered me, let him fall into the house. Or, if I have a run-in with someone, I will go after them and recite the Suragama Mantra, and then when they slander me, they will fall into the house. If you have that kind of thought, then you'd better stop reciting the Suragama Mantra right this minute and leave off your study of the Buddha Dharma. That's because people who study the Buddha Dharma must not hate people, must not be jealous of people, must not obstruct people, must not be selfish in these ways. You cannot have the attitude, I'm fine to hate with you. The Buddha Dharma exists for the sake of rescuing all living beings. It is not designed to cause living beings to commit offenses. You must be clear about this point. Ananda say, I imperceptibly received its strength, but I still haven't actually heard it. I got the strength from it, but silently and invisibly, so I've never actually heard it, although I received the benefit of it. I still don't even know how to recite it. I've never even heard it.